Welcome to my podcast. My name is Jackie K, and this is Sipping with Jack. On this episode of Sipping with Jack, we'll be just discussing Lisa Ray's messy marriage girl. Yes. We're also going to be talking about this new wave of relationship advice about how black women need to struggle in order to find love, which you already know how I feel about that. Also, we're going to be talking about what is it, Gina Rodriguez and her use of the N-word and how we got double standards out here for the N-word, had tea, and we're going to get into that tea. And then lastly, we'll be discussing my Trigger Trish section of the week. And these are just a couple of stories that I've heard that really triggered me in some way. And I feel like we need to have a discussion about that. So before I get into the podcast, let's get into the drink of the week. And my drink of the week, if you already saw my Instagram, which is Sipping with Jack, you probably already saw that I already posted it, which is a pomegranate mimosa. Hunty, I was in the feeling of just making another brunchy kind of drink. And it's a very simple two ingredient drink also, which is just basically pomegranate juice. And some champagne. And that's literally it. And make sure, because I know some people want to know, you know, the best way to make a mimosa. Literally, just put juice and champagne into, like, literally anything. You can make it a mimosa. But always make sure that champagne is on ice, hunty. You do not want, you know, a lukewarm mimosa, hunty. It is not a move, but yes, just basically a simple mimosa, pomegranate mimosa, which I will be sipping on during this podcast. And let's get into these topics because Hunty has been gone for two weeks and she is ready to talk about some things, okay? Okay, just a little disclaimer why I've been gone for about two weeks. Um, I went to Vegas and Hunty, I've been back for about a couple of days and my body has honestly just been recovering from being at being in Vegas. And I don't feel like I even went that hard in Vegas. But sis needed some time. And I feel like I was able to get a lot of good stories this week. And just been marinating over some things. And I'm ready to get back to it. So yeah. And I will also probably be doing a video on my YouTube channel. Which is Jackie K. And I'll probably be talking about my Vegas experience, also showcasing some of the outfits that I wore, hunting. It's going to be real, real cute. But let's get into the first story. So the first story is Lisa Ray and her messy marriage. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Lisa Ray back in like early 2000s, I believe. Um, I apologize if I'm not right. But she was married to the Bohemian. Um, no, he was Tricks and Caicos. Okay, so Lisa Ray was married to the premier of Tricks and Caicos, and he was messy. He was a very messy man. There was a rape allegation against him, corruption all against him. And sis, during his deposition and testimony, he literally threw Lisa Ray underneath the bus as if she knew all that was happening. So that's tea. That's real tea. And that's, that makes me uncomfortable. Like, can you marry, can you imagine marrying a man that does all this dirt and then he tries to pin some stuff on you too? I'd be like, oh, I don't know this to me. But anyway, why I wanted to talk about her was that her TV One special came out and I was actually really fascinated because I kept hearing stuff about Lisa Ray and her marriage. And of course, at that time, I'm literally like, no older than, like, probably eight when all of this happened. So I wasn't in the mix of knowing how messy her marriage was and how so many people like to two-step in and out of her marriage. You know what I'm saying? So I heard the whole, her whole messy marriage because of Nicole Murphy. Her cheating scandal came out, and then Lisa Ray was like, she was also messing with my husband. I was like, oh, so let's go with her marriage. So anyway... As I was saying, he was a very messy man. Her marriage was messy. Very, a lot of infidelity, a lot of, you know, situations that were going on. But she released in that TV1 special 
and I believe it was Unsung or Uncharted, I don't know, one of those, um, you can find the episode very easily. I'll probably lead, try to leak it down below if you guys want to see, you know, what I'm talking about. But she confessed that Dwayne Martin, which is Tisha Campbell's ex-husband, and also Will Smith's best friend, was introducing her husband to girls. I thought that was shookworthy because he was married at the time too, so I I don't know for sure if he was doing dirt, but like Tisha Campbell said he's not the greatest guy in the world and she's had restraining orders against him and all this stuff, so that's messy too. But I just thought that was funny because Lisa Ray, her marriage to this man, and she was actually the first lady of Tricks and Caicos at one point, but this man just seems so messy and I almost feel I feel so bad for her like super sad for her and somebody was saying like which this really rubbed me the wrong way they're like why does Lisa Ray always blame everybody else for her marriage was she not involved in her marriage but I'm like are you low-key trying to blame Lisa Ray that all the issues in her marriage were her? Because I'm pretty sure there was a whole male adult in the relationship, too, who was doing so much dirt beyond dirt and literally had circles of people to, like, facilitate his dirt. So, I don't know. I felt like I just wanted to talk about that because that narrative was starting to bubble up and I was hearing it and I'm like, no, this is not what we're going to do because it always seems like when a marriage goes bad or if a man is always cheating, they somehow always like to look at the woman to be like, well, what, did, what are you doing? Like as if I'm supposed to clean up everything or like be his mom, which I'm not. So like, I don't know. But I really feel bad for her because she says that her and Dwayne Martin are like literally not friends. She said F him in the interview, girl. And I feel like that is so shady just in general to have a friend who is your friend first be facilitating your husband to be wildin'. Like you're literally like your friend is helping your husband fought around like honestly cool child that like really made me sad and like for her to like always not always be talking but like she's literally like divulging all of this information of like how bad her marriage was and how like how he like literally was just cheating right and left stealing money corruption like i feel bad for her I really do feel bad for her, and I just, oh, girl, I'm happy that she, like, you know, divorced him and got over it, but I feel like at the same time, honey, you need to heal, you know, let this out, but leave it alone at the same time, and I don't know. I just thought that story was interesting, so I'm gonna push it back to you guys. What do you guys think about the whole situation? Do you think it's so interesting that Lisa Ray is still talking about how messy her marriage is? Or B, can you imagine how messy a marriage this was? Like, literally. And also, he's like, literally the, the leader of a country. And is that messy? I think that's probably also why I trip out about this story a little bit. Is because Lisa Ray was the first lady of Turks and Caicos. And her husband was the premier. And yet, he was so messy. Which makes me think, like, of course, politicians might be you know, a little corrupt, but like, but like, but like, you know what I'm saying? So let's move on to the next story, my love. And this kind of connects back to like the, the story about Lisa Ray about how black women have to struggle in order to find love. And I thought this was an interesting topic because I feel like it's been it's been circulating for a hot minute I'm not gonna lie I feel like they've always tried to make this narrative of like black women have to struggle and as being a black woman I don't believe that I really don't believe that black women have to just struggle a little more to find love if you're more educated good luck sis finding a man you know this just narrative about black women and finding love and just the struggle of love and blah 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 all that stuff I feel like at this point I'm tired of it like I'm a 20 year I'm in my 20s let's not you know 
put a number on it. But I'm in my 20s and I'm a black woman and I don't believe that's true. Like, I feel like y'all just want to push that narrative on us and make us try to accept it. Like, I'm not going to accept it. And the reason why I found this so interesting is because I was on Lovely T's uh, Instagram page and she posted a picture of Gucci Man and Kishi k -War. And she was reposting something. So it wasn't her that said it. But somebody reposted and they were saying, like, you know, Gucci Man was on drugs. Gucci Man was cheating on her. You know, Kishi Kaor. Gucci Man was incarcerated when he was with Kishi Kaor. And he came out, you know, being a better man because Kishi Kaor, like, held him down and wanted to make him a better man. And basically, the person in the original post was saying, Black women need to do this more. Hold down your man while, you know, just basically saying, like, black women need to stay around for the F, for the schnozzleberries. Like, I don't want to cuss on here, but, like, black women, you just need to stay, hold down your man while he's going through it. Which, really, he's not going through it. He's just choosing to go through anybody. You know what I'm saying? He's choosing to do all of this mess. And somehow, this post was trying to say, you need to be there for you? Like, I was confused. And I remember, you know, Lovely T was stating in her comment section that, like, this is not true. This shouldn't even be acceptable. Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. And I think I'm paraphrasing, but she wasn't along with that storyline. That's all I can remember. And it made me feel personally that that shouldn't even be happening either. Like, can you imagine? Let's just, let's not... Let's put a real life example out here because, you know, Gucci man, yes, he cheated. He was on lean all the time. He was on drugs. He literally got incarcerated. Keisha Kaur hold, held him down the whole time. That's the exception to the rule. Okay, please explain to me. If I was a woman and I acted like Gucci man, let's be honest, if I was out here you know, doing drugs, being wild, being messy, you know, cheating on my man, getting locked up. Let's even throw that in. If I got locked up, would you think my man will hold me down? No, he would not because he's like, you need to get your life together, sis, because I'm not here for you. And if you are there for me, then bless your heart. But like, no, you're not going to, majority of y'all will not be there for me. Like, I'm going to be super honest because I feel like that's the truth. So, like, for men, especially black men, to expect me to stay with you while you are doing Lord only knows is such a twisted and lopsided argument. Or it's just so lopsided to favor men that it's almost ridiculous. And I feel like this narrative is just making... Black women feel bad. It's just always that mindset of like, black women will never find love. We're just hard to love. Yeah, you have to have a man that's, you know, you have to have like a work in progress. Like women are always shown that like, we're a work in progress. We like to, we like to build people. We like to build men. And I'm like, I'm not here for that. Like, I'm not here for this mindset. I'm not here to believe that black women need to struggle in order to find love. Who said that? And you know what? Who said that was a black man? I'm not even getting kid because all of a sudden you have, you know, Snoop Dogg was saying the same, like, same thing, which he's had multiple side babies on his own wife. Like, he's not even faithful out here. He was hooking up with that one Instagram girl and then trying to make, like, a, like, clout chasing documentary. I'm just saying, Snoop Dogg, I'm waiting for that documentary show because since you wanted to say she was a liar and then you were making a documentary, hunty, I'm still waiting for that documentary because I'm pretty sure that documentary never existed. You just got caught, sir. Publicly caught. So just having that mindset of like, black women, yes, you're never going to get the greatest man in the beginning, but like, stay for a couple of years. He might change. Like, no, I'm not staying here for it. Like, you got me so messed up to think that I'm just going to stay with you to hold you down. I'm probably going to be like, I'm going to raise my hand and say, no, baby. 
I'm sorry. I am not a parent. I am not a mother. Like, we are, and that's the thing. We are all in our 20s. Like, for me, at least, you know, the people I surround myself with. We're all in our 20s. If you literally do not have your life together in your 20s and you feel like somebody needs to baby you, honey, you have bigger issues in your life. Literally, you probably should not be in a relationship. You need to get that together first. And if you feel like you can do whatever you want in a relationship, I don't know. I don't know. Because my mind is literally blown. And I feel like this is also a ploy to, like, make the bar so low for men that, like, women can't fight, you know, that bar that standard they have for themselves, they're like, we're men, we're gonna mess up, we're gonna do bad. And I just take it. You know what I'm saying? We'll grow up in like five years, but we just need you there. It's like, ugh, no, that's not a true mindset. That's not, ugh, cha, baby Jesus. It's not a true mentality. And I'm speaking to all my black ladies, my black queens. Do not believe that you have to stay for some mess in order to find love. We are queens. Uh, fix that crown, sis, okay? It might have just slipped, but fix it and get back on your grind because I'm sick and tired of this narrative where men can do whatever they want, but then when a girl does something, it's like, I knew it, I knew it. She wasn't the one for me. This is why I had to do all this stuff. Like, uh, like I can't. So literally, also, outside of all my black queens that are listening to this, in general, women... Do not tolerate men like that because as a woman, we should compliment a man. We shouldn't complete him. And I'm sick and tired of that narrative of all of a sudden, women should be everything to a man because, honey, I'm not everything to you. Like, I literally cannot make up the things you lack in yourself, like, at all. Anyway, let's, let's calm down, you know. Let's get a little sipping on this mimosa. And let's move on to our next topic. And our next topic is Gina Rodriguez and her use of the N-word. I guess I had to take a quick sip because I'm not here for it. Like, I don't. I, I don't understand. Like, I'm literally not here. And I've never been a fan of Gina Rodriguez ever anyway and I know some people are gonna be like well have you watched you know Jane the Virgin have you watched that one Netflix movie blah 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 all that stuff no I haven't seen any of it because I'm literally not here for her like I am not her stan like I the thing is with Regina Rodriguez if people don't know her past and I don't want to say it's anti-black but it's definitely microaggressions towards black people and i don't know what what really has gone on with her that she feels the need to have these tiny microaggressions and i feel like that's why people never really caught her until she said the n-word but i diverge i you know i digress that's the real word i try to say so let's go back to her same n-word and i'll kind of bring in her backstory of why I don't mess with her and why people really shouldn't mess with her because of her microaggressions towards black people. So, uh, Regina Rodriguez was getting her makeup done. She looked, girl, she, I don't know if she had the strength of a thousand black women inside of her and felt like she could not be touched, but she, homegirl, looked it straight into the camera, said the N-word because she was listening to a Fuji song, said the N-word, as if, like, she couldn't be touched, okay? This girl was like, I haven't been touched yet. So she could feel like she could do anything. And, of course, she made a weak apology and was like, I'm sorry, blah, 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 and all of that stuff. And I'll talk about the aftermath a little bit more, but all I'm saying, she made a weak apology and basically said sorry she was just caught up in the moment she loves that song she loves the food cheese so she just felt the strength of saying any word and this is also another ps announcement to everyone that's not black hmm 
the n-word's not for you i'm gonna be super honest the n-word is not for you and you should not be even saying it i don't know why everyone feels the need to be a part of this this elusive club of using the n-word being cool or any of that stuff because it's not cool do you know that the n-word is a derogatory term towards black people or no because i'm waiting i'm waiting because y'all be using it as if it's not and I was actually reading an article that was very fascinating and they argued the fact that if every person, like all these people outside of the black race and black community that use the N-word, why don't you guys use derogatory terms to say friendly things towards each other? Like, why aren't you, because everyone wants to say, oh, the N-word, I thought it meant like a friendly term. Oh my goodness, sometimes I like want to roll my head because I'm pretty sure we all had Black History Month in school. We literally probably all saw the Ruby Bridges story. We probably all saw how slaves were treated. Like, so please mind me with the BS. Please miss me with it because I don't understand why all of a sudden everyone's like, well, I thought it was a friendly term. I'm, you know, all, all, all I was just saying, I wasn't saying it to be derogatory. Like, I wasn't trying to say it. But, like, you know the gravity of that word. So, like, if you tell me you didn't know the meaning, you lying to yourself. Okay, that's all I'm saying. But let's get back to the story. So, she gives out a really weak, 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 weak stuff. And that's what I was trying to, you know, say. And basically, after she said the word, people were like, oh, no, no, no. And then she does the apology, and people were like, no, 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 still. And then Riza from Wu Tang Clang, um, which I, I, you know, I think I'm gonna get in trouble from quite a few Wu Tang Wu Tang Clang fans. But Riza ain't really for black women. And I say this, and I know people are gonna be like, whoa, 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 whoa. But remember when, I know, people are going to be like, sis, hold up, because I have to make a disclaimer, because y'all are about to snatch my legit wig right now. But my disclaimer is that, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> but the story is, I don't believe this is really for black women, because when the whole Azealia Russell Crowe situation happened, and yes, Azealia Banks is literally probably the worst person in the world. She is very trash. I know it. I've even talked about her multiple times on my podcast. I don't feel like she is a sufficient person. Like, not, wow, that's something like actually really mean. I don't feel like she's nice. Like, she's literally, there's something inside of her that she just has to be mean. Like, there's literally nothing else that, like, I can take away from her besides like she's mean like she literally has hate in her heart like that's all I can say but this was before this was before like she really speed her hate so she was just an up-and-coming star you know what I'm saying so she was having dinner with Russell Crowe and then something happened and then Russell Crowe like hit her or like he, Russell Crowe actually has a legit temper so i get i get confused why people like kind of forget that like i don't understand maybe you know what i'm not gonna go there because that's not my podcast topic right now but for men who have outright tan like temper tantrums at the age of like 40 and plus you have anger issues like you need to fix that baby girl like we're not we're not standing here for like oh he's just passionate he wants he knows what he wants no he's being aggressive and abusive for no reason okay i'm not here to be like a baby see that's the thing i'm not here to baby people like i'm really not so i'm sorry if i come off harsh but like sis doesn't care anymore so anyway so basically russell crowe yeah he hit her or shoved her out of the room. I don't know. I don't really know what happened. All I know is I, I feel like I kind of believe Azealia Banks. I feel like he was just beyond aggressive. And a man versus a woman should never happen. So for him to even feel emboldened enough to be in a room with people and still mistreat this girl and no one speaks up, that's an issue. So anyway, so people were like, well, Rizzi, you were in the room. Why didn't you help her why didn't you stand up for her and he was like well she should have known her place he basically said she should have known her place and she didn't so like you're basically saying the way that she was treated by this man was what she deserved 
and for a man to be like pro black to say that towards a black woman made me give him the side eye because I'm like that doesn't make sense if you're for black women you should never be for the mistreatment of them like at all and especially the aggression allegedly he had towards her is never permitted but you're literally sitting there saying she deserved it ah, mm -mm. Huh. don't appreciate that but anyway as i was saying that the whole story about rizza not really being for black women i truly believe that he literally vouched for <laughs> gina rodriguez and said oh she can't use the n-word because she's latina We're just going to make them, we're going to take a moment of silence right now because I'm tired of hearing that excuse. I'm literally tired of hearing that excuse. And you know who's only saying that excuse? Black men. Sorry. I'm going to call you guys out because somehow you guys keep giving passes for these people who don't clearly get passes. So like for us to even be like, well, she's Latina, so she can say the N word. No, 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 she can't. She still literally can't. And I remember that whole, yes, Julesies, I think that's her name, where she was a white girl and she was saying the N-word. And people were like, girl, you can't say the N-word. That's offensive. And then black men were like, well, she struggled. Yeah, that's another moment of silence for us because I'm confused. Because we can't keep picking and choosing who can use the n-word we need to pretty much stay consistent with this because i feel like this is why people are probably getting emboldened to just keep saying the word and not really get vouched for it because we have other people on this side of our, the black community saying oh sis you can't say it but then we have other people who are prominent in the black community that are seen as prominent in the black community especially rissa from wu-tang clan Wu Tang Clan? Wu Tang Clan? I apologize. My mimosa is kicking in right now. But for him to feel emboldened enough to say, oh no, she's good, she's fine, that it's like, then who can't say it? Like, if this white girl can say the N word and y'all are saying, well, she struggled so she can use it. And then you have this Latin, Latina girl being able to say it, but it's like, well, she's Latina, she can say it. Then please explain to me, maybe I'm confused. Who can't use the word? Because clearly, I feel like at this point now, we're all saying, well, if you struggled and you're a person of color, then I guess you can say it, which I don't believe that. And I know this podcast is getting a little, you know, controversial and all that stuff and very outspoken, but I feel like I need to speak about these topics because it's almost, I just want people to hear how it don't make sense. Like, make it make sense for me almost because... It's not. Like, I'm, I'm honestly a black woman, and I'm confused. I'm confused. Like, I will always stand with the idea that you cannot use the N-word. But, like, if I have all these conflicting people, these conflicting facts, or these conflicting comments about this stuff, that it's just like, baby, we need to make it make sense. Like, right now, make it make sense, because it's clearly not making sense. And we can't be cute out here to be like, oh, well, this person kind of, like, said it, but, like, they can pass. But this person said it. Burn them. I'm like, why Why do they get a pass and this person doesn't? Why does this person get a pass this person doesn't? I feel like we should just keep the playing field straight and say none of it. None of it. Y'all can't say it. Y'all can't touch it. Okay, it's not all of a sudden a free-for-all. We can't just be like, well, I struggled. No. Well, I'm this. No. Just cancel, period. Like, we're done. Like, honestly, I'm done. I am done. So, in ending that, I want to give some examples of why I kind of have my background with um, Gina Rodriguez and Sorry, I literally always keep forgetting her name, so I have to keep looking at my notes just to remember her name. That's how much she, like, kind of bothers me, so I try not to, like, remember her that much. But the one example I remember, well, there's two examples that I have that I'm just like, nah, we're not about it. She made the comment of, you know, when Black Panther came out, which 
sis was a movement hunty with a whole lifestyle which was a whole like meal and a half it was a whole buffet we were so privileged to have black panther okay guess what we're Guess what Miss Rodriguez comes out and says, where's our Black Panther? I get what you're saying, sis, and I completely understand. But this is not the moment. Literally, this is not the moment for you to say that exact comment or statement right now. We are literally celebrating Black Panther and how monumental and pivotal it is because it's a Black superhero that's based in Africa, sis. Okay, let us have our win. Don't come up behind us and be like, well, where's ours? No, no one asked you right now. Literally, no one asked. And then also the second thing was her second microaggression was I remember watching an interview. And this was like the interview that I was like, yeah, she done. She done for me. Because I was about to watch that Netflix special that she was in. And then I was like, yeah, nah, no, no, no. I was on the line with her. Because I was like, maybe that was just a mess up with her. Because she did other stuff. I was like, maybe it's a mess up. But then when she said this, I was like, nah, you have microaggressions towards black people. And it's clearly evident, but some people don't seem to catch it. So besides the point, they were in her interview with, I literally cannot remember her name. I think it's Yair? She's the girl from Blackish, and she's also the lead actor on Grownish. So she is that beautiful brown skin girl, melanin queen, honey. And I remember they were doing an interview because I believe they were in a movie together or a TV show. I don't know what they were in. And the interviewer was like, you know, I'm so happy to see you. He was talking to the actor from Grownish. He was talking to her and was like, you know, we don't have that much black girl representation. Like, literally speaking and praising her. He's like, you know, black girl magic, all that stuff. And Miss Rodriguez comes back, literally interjects and saying like, well, it's all women. And he like literally looked at her. The guy who was giving the interview looked at her. He was like, yeah, but I'm talking about black women right now because it's like, do you not? This is the thing that I keep getting confused. Do you not understand we're not talking about that right now? Like, that's... that, And I think when I saw her say that, I was like, can we not have a moment with you coming in the back of it and be like, no, it's all women, which I completely understand. And I'm not trying to get there about, you know, all of that stuff. But no, this is not the moment to say that stuff like literally he's praising her talking about representation in media we weren't talking about that right now we were literally not talking about that but you felt the need to say something about that which makes me feel like she's just showing her true colors with those little microaggressions that she has where it's like she literally has to blur out how she feels like literally can we not have a black girl moment can we not have a black girl magic moment can we not have a black people magic moment without you saying something behind it that like high key just really bothers me about her and i know some people are gonna be like well i don't know for sure but it's like literally look it up you can literally find stuff about it and that's why i feel like she was emboldened enough to say the n-word on social media because literally no one's been catching her wig nobody's been snatching her up she's been literally able to get away with all these microaggressions and then all of a sudden, now she says the N-word, but now you're going to snatch her wig? Now you're going to snatch her wig? Even though she's been talking that mess the whole time? Make it make sense, honey. Make it make sense. That's another thing. Make it make sense. If these people be acting a little wild out here, believe them. That's what Maya Angelou said, honey. The great, great, great speaker she was. She said, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Why all of a sudden we have amnesia? What? Literally, I don't know if I gotta have to, you know, I gotta have an Amber Alert for our brain cells out here because all of y'all are missing right now. Like, I'm tired of this. I really am tired of this. But anyway, I know <laughs> I'm gonna calm down a little bit. I know most of all of the stories that I've been talking about are, mm, you might say I'm a little heated about it might be a little off the cuff about it but actually today is the first time I did a podcast without really having a scripted like outline 
outline. Yeah, I didn't have a scripted outline. I'm kind of just talking and just going off the cuff because I feel like this is more natural to me and you guys can be able to see my personality a little better than me like literally reading articles and reading my little notes. So please let me know how you guys like this format and I know as I said I was pretty passionate about everything and then honey I haven't even gotten into my trigger trish section of the week you know what I'm saying so just get just get ready I'm gonna give you guys a second to cool down because we about to get into my trigger trish section of the week and these are two stories that I kind of wanted to talk about and I've been I'm going to be super honest. I didn't really want to talk about these topics because I personally didn't really know how I felt about them. I felt like I almost needed a concrete argument to kind of discuss it. Not even an argument, but a concrete, you know, foundation to build my thoughts on. And I, I still feel very passionate about them. And that's why I made them the trigger trish section. But I know some people, they're going to lean one way or the other with these topics. And I know that for sure. So we're just going to dive into it and we're going to kind of see how everything goes. If you feel some type of way, let me know. Let me know in the comment section because I really want to get this discussion popping. You know what I'm saying? And just be able to open up the floor to see other people's mindsets about things. Because I certainly have my own opinion. That's why I have my own podcast. But... I want to see how other people feel about it because, not going to lie, I start myself with people that kind of have the same mindset that I have. So for me, I want to see, you know, what other people think. So the first triggered Trish story of the week is Basketball Lives. Yes, hunty. I know it's been like actually a minute because I feel like I heard about the story before I went to Vegas but then I didn't want to talk about it because I kind of still wanted to see how it rolled out. Because, if you guys didn't know, so Basketball Wives literally got in trouble because of colorism, racism, all of that isms. And because of Evelyn and her ratchet mouth. And somehow she never wants to be quiet about it. You know what I'm saying? And her, basically her personal attack towards OG who is a black woman and she basically put a monkey emoji on instagram i believe and people were like yo sis that's that's racist and then she was like nah nah it's not but it's like sis it is because you know the connotation of putting a monkey with any reference to a black person you know exactly what that means and for people to be like, well, I didn't know. Were you not here for the whole H&M debacle where that little kid wore the coolest monkey in the jungle? Like, if anybody wants to say that they didn't know, y'all are living A, in a box, B, in the dark, or C, y'all are playing yourself and y'all like to lie. <laughs> Pick one of them. So anyway, so like for O. For OG to be, like, taking all of this colorism and taking all these microaggressions towards this other cast of women literally just, like, set me off that, like, I, being a dark-skinned woman myself, like, it's just, like, this is true. Like, colorism does exist and racism does exist and it doesn't necessarily have to be from other people. It can literally be close proximity people to you and... It just like blew my mind because I remember watching a little, little you know, clips and pieces of the reunion and they had Mark Lamont Hill on like, he was basically the mediator or the host of the reunion, which I feel like y'all know. And I know some people are like, well, Lamont Hill, you know, he's on CNN, he's a very small well-spoken man you know what to hbcu like all that stuff he can be able to speak but there's there's a point that you knew this wasn't gonna work because lamont hill pretty sure he just kept it very neutral he didn't really discuss anything he didn't even like hold anybody accountable he like literally was there like he literally just took air like I was just like what are we talking about right now because we aren't talking about the true fact about colorism because 
y'all put OG in a separate room because you were saying she was aggressive. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone on that cast got into a fight with someone, right? But OG is the aggressive one that has to be in the other room. If that doesn't sound like colorism and racism, I don't know what is. I, I really don't. Like, ex please, please explain to me. And when you try to explain it, please come correct to me because it is not fact. It is not truth what you're trying to tell me, Henty. Like, that was some messed up stuff. And I literally, I get so heated about it because it's like you can literally see it's laid on thick, like thick with two C's. Maybe even slap a Q U in it, girl, because that's how thick all of that stuff was. And I felt so mad because Lamont Hill didn't even, Mark Lamont Hill, he didn't even discuss anything. And like, you can't have a discussion about racism, colorism against someone who's not even in the room. Like, that's also the other issue I had with Basketball Lives. It's like, the person who is the victim of all this stuff isn't even put in the same room. So how is she supposed to talk? Like, how is she supposed to have a discussion? Like, oh my goodness. So I was just kind of mad overall. And then like, OG is getting sued by Evelyn because she was like, she's this, <laughs> she, oh my gosh. Girl, I can't even say this with a straight face because it's that comical. Like, Evelyn is such a bully and she literally harasses people. Like, I'm not even saying that to be nice. She harasses people. And she's Shiny's little pit bull. Like, she, like, literally, she just scraps with people. Scraps with words. Scraps with everything. Like, it's just, like, literally doesn't make sense how Evelyn is this. She behaves this way. Because Evelyn's, like, in her 40s. And I, I can never... And I'm in my 20s, so I can never, so, like, I can never, like, understand why she does this. And I don't know if that check is fat, because that's the only reason I can think someone would act this way and literally not care about their reputation. Because literally, sis, you are known to be a bully, but then all of a sudden you do bully stuff and someone calls you out and all of a sudden you have to sue them? That's a white woman stuff, and I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that, Evelyn. You know you did everything wrong. You're the one who sent out that post. Why all of a sudden is you feel like you're being attacked? You you said it. I don't know where I have to go with that. You said it. You were caught. Hold people to standards of accountability. Like, yet again, make it make sense, sis. Make it make sense sense so anyway i was just like i'm over like i wasn't even really ever watching basketball lives but just hearing this and hearing all of this situation i was just like yet again this is why i don't watch reality tv in that way because reality tv ain't really reality tv like that like y'all are just so shady so messy and i don't appreciate it like at all and i don't appreciate how og was treated og is a beautiful nigerian woman and she should be treated as a equal, not, mm, that's all I'm saying. So I want to see how you guys feel about the whole basketball live situation. Do you feel like, you know what? I ain't even gonna ask that question because Evelyn ain't even right. Evelyn dead wrong in the whole situation. But do you think that they should have handled the reunion better? I think that they could have, but I don't think they knew how to because I feel like it was never really a problem until it was called out. And... But the thing is, I always knew that there was issue with colorism and all that stuff on the cast. But I feel like someone actually pointed it out publicly. And then they were like, oh gosh, oh my goodness, we have to deal with it right now. And they handled it so poorly that it's almost like eye roll worthy, not even comical. Like I can't even say it's comical. Evelyn behavior after is comical, but literally it's not comical because this is actually real life and like. It's true. And, like, for them not to be able to recognize that almost blows my mind. My whole mind, honey. And then the last Trigger Trish story that I wanted to talk about was Meghan Merkel and, like, the whole royal family, her Prince Harry, Prince Albert. Like, this story kind of makes me sad because I was watching an interview on BBC today 
And yes, your sis watches international news. I know, some of y'all be shook, but your girl is international. She likes to read. She likes to know what's going on. But I remember watching an interview and she was basically talking about how like nobody really asks her if she's doing okay or, you know, how it feels to be a newlywed, also a new mother and like borderline everybody over overseas and London be <laughs> racist. And I know some of y'all are going to be like, no, 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 no. Um, do you not remember the newspaper that posted that her like when she gave birth, she post they posted a picture that Prince Albert will be a monkey like as see this is what I'm saying like literally if you don't think th oh my gosh I have so many examples I can pull out where literally black people are referred to as monkeys but people don't want to acknowledge that that's true like make it make sense their racism oh my gosh everyone oh my little brain is almost about to stop it's spasming right now because I don't understand how people still don't get the racist undertones of that. Whew, let me bring it back, girl. Let me bring it back. But, like, just watching that and her talking and, like, the whole debacle of, you know, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, you know, suing British tabloids for tapping their phone. It's just, like, it's beyond hard for her. And I was, like, this kind of makes me sad because I don't remember, you know, Kate Middleton, Kate Middleton going really through anything. And I feel like maybe just Kate Middleton is a little more subdued. Like, she doesn't have to, like, you know. She doesn't really talk much. Like, I don't really feel like I hear her talking. But, like, Meghan Markle is a very strong, independent woman. You know, she's not... Let's just be honest, the elephant in the room, she is half black. So I feel like that's one of the issues that the royal family has. But, like, they don't... I don't want to say necessarily the royal family, but I feel like people overseas don't really know how to handle that or compute that maybe let's just say they don't know it don't compute to them so they feel like they can just say anything or do anything and she can't really say anything or do anything and I feel like that kind of just hurts because it's like she's just going through so much right now and just watching her be like it's it's hard and I feel like I watch and I was like this woman's just broken like, and, like, that kind of hurts me to see because I really forgot all of, like, not, like, forgetting, but it's just, like, how life, how hard can life really be? Like, you are a princess, sis. Like, you are living your best life. You have a fine man, okay? Prince Harry, fine, okay? <laughs> a whole meal. Like, and you have, you know, a beautiful baby. Like, I'm just, like, you know, you have to travel the world, like, all that stuff. And then I realized, Jacqueline, you literally forgot how messy her family is. You literally forgot, like, the racism her own, you know, Prince Harry's family had kind of towards her. And, like, the racism, you know, through media. And, like, now they're exposing that, like, Kate Middleton and, you know, Prince William don't really connect with them. It's just like, dang, sis. Like, it's hard. Like, it's really hard for her. And just watching her literally talk as if she's broken broke me. And I was just like, yo, this isn't, this isn't fair, like, anymore. Like, this isn't. Like, Kate Middleton, the most she gets is that sis wore the same trench coat the fourth time. Like, they're calling Meghan Markle, like, the separator of the whole royal family. Like, they're coming for her neck, and I'm like, dang, this is hard for her. So I feel like, you know, I'm going to send my thoughts and prayers to Meghan Markle because it was announced that they're not going to be doing any royal things during, you know, winter or the month of December because they want to travel back to the U.S., you know, split both of their times, you know, between, you know, countries because, you know, Meghan Markle's from, you know, the hood i think she's from compton or crenshaw but like she's from california you know that she has the right to go back and visit and i feel like people just don't get her and i feel like it kind of it just makes me sad and if you guys could hear that sound in the background i was putting lotion on my arm so i apologize if it sounded really loud but yeah so 
yeah i guess i'm just gonna leave you guys with one positive note because i know everything was kind of particularly heavy this week because your sis has been gone for two weeks so she just wants you to now like just show up to things like be there be positive and i feel like i only got this message because i was listening to dr Brene brown's interview the other day where she was like you can't People can't come at you for doing things because you're actually doing things. So, yet again, just show up. Do things. Because the fear of you not doing it and the fear of you thinking that, you know, others can say things about you. Just understand, honey, you in the arena. You're doing what you said you were going to do. So don't let anyone, you know, take that away from you or say anything else because people like to talk, honey. <laughs> People like to talk, but people can't really back it up. So just know that. Just show up. Do whatever you want in your life. Just know that you always know that at least you did something. So I'm going to leave you guys there. And let's get the comment section, you know, pop in. You know, let's have a little dialogue down there. And just let me know how you guys kind of like this off-the-cuff kind of commentary podcast version that I usually I haven't done before but I feel like this is a lot more natural to me so but if you guys like anything else please please watch more of my podcasts they're available on all streaming platforms except my last podcast which was just a live version so it was available on YouTube and speaker app also, follow me on all my social media platforms, which will be linked down below, and you can be able to find my recipe of the week on my Instagram profile, which is Sipping with Jack. And if you're interested in any more drink recipes, please check out www.sippingwithjack.com. And I hope you guys have a lovely week, and just keep positive, y'all, because People out here can stress you. And also remember, make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense. So I'll see you guys later. And don't forget to keep on sipping. Bye. Bye.